Hi, I'm Josh from Auspac Solar. I'm an electrical contractor. I'm a solar installer, both on and off grid, and also with a battery accreditation added. Today, we're going to be discussing a three part discussion about batteries, um, in particular, the value of getting them, the pros and the cons. So the first part of this segment is a main objection that we hear is that the technology for batteries is just not quite there. So energy storage technology and the need for it has been around since humans figured out how to create and control electricity. There have been many advances in technology which have been required for devices such as phones, camping equipment, your watches, a laptop, an individual battery cell, and obviously for this segment, solar home storage systems, and there's many other case scenarios, of course. But none more so than EVs or electric vehicles. The electric vehicle market worldwide in 2024 was tipped to reach over 1 trillion Australian dollars. Compare that to the global solar energy storage battery market of around 10 billion Australian worldwide. And you can see that the home battery storage market dwarfs that of the electric vehicle market at only 1% comparative market share. However, solar home batteries have directly benefited from electric vehicle storage systems. Elon Musk being a common household name and with the EV market set to double again in value by 2030, the hunt for more efficient, safe and lightweight energy storage is sure to only improve. In the last three years, we've really seen an uptick in battery technology. In particular, the LIFO4 composition, cobalt free and incredibly stable. The new and improved lithium ion composition steered away from previous issues with older lithium batteries such as thermal runaway, which cause fires and dangerous gassing issues from lead acid batteries, as well as obvious lead acid weight to energy output inefficiencies. The hunt was on in the mid 2000s for an affordable household energy storage solution for all applications. Now fast forward 25 years and we now have available in modular, easy to install and safe battery storage capacity. Safe, weatherproof, stable, and even with built-in features like heating elements in sub-zero temperatures, liquid gel cooling, and fire suppression systems built in for some residential and commercial grade equipment. For the last two to three years, we've seen the quality of battery technology reached and even better integrations with inverters and solar manufacturers. Solar battery technology is here to stay and it's in a great state. Will the technology continue to improve? Absolutely. But it's now good enough to not have to worry about waiting for that reason. And Auspac Solar only uses batteries that are of the highest grade standards, which includes a full in-home 10 year warranty on all batteries and actual life expectancies on batteries that range from 12 up to 20 years. But are batteries actually useful if you got a lot of solar? And are they worth it financially? Well, in the next two segments, we'll discuss that. The next segment is, are batteries useful with solar? A solar panel, as the name suggests, only works when the sun's out. Solar will still work when it's cloudy, albeit less. And when it's nighttime, there's available energy storage, then batteries will work to provide power that your household requires. But batteries are also incredibly useful during the day, which includes businesses, off-grid systems and homeowners. We don't often think about batteries being useful in the day time, but let me show you a solar and battery system uh, with some data so that this will make a little bit more sense to you. In our first picture, we have a graph of loads that the small business needed to supply. They have a 16 kilowatt hour storage of battery and 16 kilowatts of solar. I had to go back from today's recording date, which is the 25th of the 1st, 25, to find a graph that was good enough with this PV curve. Now we can see that the sun rises midday and the sun sets. This was back, as you can see, at the 6th of January. I had to go back 19 days to find an optimal graph. This is an optimal sun graph. Nice curve, rises, falls, no clouds. 
It's able to charge the battery. It's able to run the loads and export a little during the day to cover the supply charges. However, in reality, we get more cloudy days and sunny days during a year, and it's mostly cloudy in hotter tropical parts of Australia. This is a normal day for a sunny and cloudy day. The peak power of the equipment is drawing no more than 12 kilowatts, as we can say. So, follow along down here, we can see our loads. In the next slide, we'll see that the solar is available, but it's incredibly intermittent and even low at some points. In the next slide, you can see that the battery is able to act as a shock absorber. This dark green line here being its state of charge, being at 100%. And we can see that when the solar dropped out, it was able to discharge slightly. And from this zero line above, we can see it's actually outputting to the loads. Shortly after outputting to the loads, it charges up. This is the state of charge increasing. And we can see here, for instance, it's charging back up. In the next slide, the grid graph is what is feeding to the grid from the solar in negative or the south of the zero line and above in the positive to the grid feeding the loads. So this is our zero line here. This is our export to the grid under that. And this is what we're using. So if we were just to cut all of that, what are we using? In the night time, a little bit because we've run out of battery power, but during the day, minimal. And the reason being is because we've got the battery there to act as a shock absorber. So in the next slide, let's combine the PV battery and load starter now. Where the battery is discharging to cover the loads, we can see this because the solar doesn't have enough available sunlight, most likely due to cloud cover. However, shortly after when the sun comes back out and solar is available, it charges the battery right back up again. Hence the battery acts as a shock absorber, as I've mentioned. If there was no battery, this power would need to be bought from the grid and at full price when most people would assume that their solar was covering their loads. And we can see that with the loads here, the solar dropping beneath what the loads need and the batteries coming in to pick up the slack, so to speak. So now let's look at the final entire graph put together. We can see the solar is strong for some of the day and this helps charge the battery. When that solar partially lacks enough power for the loads, the battery is able to cover the loads and excess solar from that can feed into the grid after it's met the loads demand and charge the battery. The grid hence is really used as backup power supply for the, for the property. One thing that never changes is the loads of the equipment. When you turn on the lights, you need them to turn on. A key design point in regards to correctly sizing the battery is not just the, battery, the battery's ability to store energy in kilowatt hours, but also the ability to handle the load's peak demand. For example, you might have a 16 kilowatt hour battery, but if you think that that 16 kilowatt hour battery can run instantly a 16 kilowatt load, think again. It won't be able to because it's kilowatt output of the battery module for this example, is 9.6 kilowatts max. Hence, we would need to increase the amount of batteries to meet the 16 kilowatt output that's required. Surging of pumps off grid and other characteristics are all required to be considered when doing a battery design. This is where speaking to an expert solar and battery designer at Auspac Solar is strongly recommended. Another misconception is the more solar you put on the better. Whilst it is recommended to go more than your inverter capacity, it's sometimes wiser to spend less on solar and more on a battery system. For example, pumps as equipment or pubs as a business tend to use a lot of energy, which is constant power over time. For instance, with freezers and fridges and air cons for customers staying at that pub, at night, they would use a lot of their energy in the evening and even when people are sleeping. So lots of solar and no batteries may not be the best financial investment. Finally, batteries are able to provide off-grid and backup supply to critical circuits for both home and businesses, which can be hard to quantify initially. But you only need to lose one fridge full of meat whilst you're on holidays to realize the value of a battery system. The biggest hindrance to batteries are the cost. So let's have a look at what they can cost to realize their value. 
So our third point that we'll be discussing today is, are batteries worth it? Batteries are the most expensive part of a typical solar and battery system. They also add more cost to a solar system as you need to run more cabling and install more switchboard equipment, such as manual transfer switches. This is where it comes down to the ability to finance over time or pay up front. Check out our financial video where Lewis will discuss more on the ability to properly spec the financial benefits of a solar and battery system to your business and home needs. Auspac Solar provides a personal loan, which can finance up to 10 years at 5.99% currently, which is the length of the warranty of the battery and, uh, and, and inverter. Battery systems start at around $10,000 Australian, installed and can increase sharply from there. However, to assist with the cost of batteries, we offer packages that generally are small, medium and large. They're modular in design and so no major rewiring costs are required. And our customers have the ability to, to choose a battery system size that fits their budget and one that they can easily and affordably add more battery capacity to later when they've no doubt seen the value of their investment returned. When we do a design at Auspac Solar, we take into consideration two fundamentals. One, the energy needs of the customer. The system needs to be useful and achieve what's required from it. And number two, the budgetary needs of the customer. The customer needs to be able to afford the system. Additionally, we've just partnered with Blue Eddy as an authorised distributor to now offer portable and high quality power stations that require little to no electrical wiring, plug and play options that can easily assist customers and in incredibly remote areas at prices that start from less than $1,000. You can find this on ospacsolar.com.au and by clicking our online store to shop. You also have options to purchase via bank transfer, credit card, and even our newly integrated $0 down hum finance option. At Auspac Solar, we strive to listen and analyze the energy needs of our customers to provide solutions that actually work for you, our customer, rather than an off the shelf system that just meets a sales KPI. We work to provide solutions at all levels of affordability. If you've enjoyed this video or found it educational, we'd love to hear your feedback. And if there's been anything discussed that you think would suit your situation, no matter what part of the buying cycle you're at, please reach out, book an appointment with one of our specialists at Auspac Solar.